So how is the product equation different from an hourly pay equation? What? So say you're paid $10 an hour, mm -hmm. 40 hours a week, 52 look, weeks a year. Look. Are you limited in how much money you can make? Uh, time out for a second. This has been on my, my heart. Someone told me that Zaxby's people make $14 an hour now to be cashiers. Were you there for that conversation? Yeah. That's wild. Side note, we were talking about hourly wages. That's a lot. Go, I mean, anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's triple my starting salary. That, <laughs> so, I mean, so, I but, started at five, six, five fifteen an hour. But that just shows you how much money they've been printing. Yep. Anyways, well, sorry, what was the original question? Because all when, all when you said $10 an hour, that I instantly was like, who makes that now? Because yeah. nobody made. Well, that's fine. Anyways, but go ahead. What it's was just the, easier to do the math? What was the original question? <laughs> what was the original question? I'm sorry. So, you can either work for an hourly wage, mm -hmm. or you can work for a deferred payment. Mm. Right. One is a product method, and one is an hourly wage, mm -hmm. or commission versus hourly wage. Mm -hmm. So, are you limited? Like, what's the difference in the equation? You get paid on a set rate for a number of hours you work. Right. And if you're deferring it, doesn't that mean you get you get paid off of what you bring in? Is so that like if you were you were designing this product? Yeah. <laughs> Pushing the table. Go so ahead. if you were designing a product, mm -hmm. is it? Are you even ever going to get paid from the product? I don't know. It's a different equation, right? You if you put if you it out there, it, you put it out there, and you never sell it, then you don't make any money, right? Even though you put a hundred hours into the product, mm -hmm. you lost your time, right? Okay. Whereas the hourly wage equation, you get paid based off of how many like specific hours you work, whether whether the person paying you makes any money at all or not, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's just a it's just a difference in equation. I'm sure this person has like a bunch of different residual products. stuff yeah. products for sure. And I bet you, I mean, makeup I'd really is, makeup actually, is endless, right? yeah, I'd really actually like to research this now at this point because I really do want to see what this person's doing. I bet you that this person probably doesn't even even do drag anymore. Hmm. Like you know, they're so big yeah. that they probably support. Or have an organization that supports it, but probably doesn't do any performing anymore. I have no idea. I'm just saying. If y'all know, let me know. I'm about, I'm gonna look it up after we're done. Well, to bring up my mom's favorite um, family, the Kardashians. Oh yeah. So how did I like it, them too? Was it? It's Kylie, right? That they got rich on her makeup. Makeup. Yeah. Wait, she was genius. She she made herself look amazing and then put her products on. Right. And said, This is my I mean, buy my products and people did. Right. She's genius, yeah. So that her she had a product equation. Yes. And that's how she got so there's a limitation to the product equation. No, there's a limitation to the hourly equation. There's a you can only get paid by the number of hours you work, and there's a limit to the hours of, of work you can work look, a week. This girl sold out her whole website in like less than thirty minutes. Yeah. So she had an endless thing too. She had no more product to sell. Yeah. So the oh, so you're saying there's limitation because you ran out of product. Yeah, because you ran okay. out of product, and the okay. need, the demand was so high for her stuff. Like it was like. I think her people end up shutting down the whole website. That's how many people actually like flocked to that when she mm -hmm. first dropped her product. So there's a limitation either way, I feel like. Um, just throwing that out there, just throwing that idea out there. Right. I get what you're saying though. It's not as common, but yeah. So what's the difference between someone like Kylie doing it versus you doing it. I mean, her last name. 
So she, her family is a household be, name. Is, so with the the branding that she already had, mm -hmm. helped her. Um, that gave her having that gave her a higher level of entry. Yeah, it catapulted her into or maybe a higher, into more success. Maybe a higher level of scale. Probably, yeah. I think so, for sure. So someone that's a regular person trying to promote a product. It's harder. So th that product is going to have a level of entry that you have to meet. Okay, yeah. Right? You have to find some somebody that influences it or market it or, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So we're, we're making this product. It's just... Does this, do we have... Who has control of this product? Nikita. The manufacturer does, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. So, if Sorry. the manufacturer finds out that you're selling out every order they have, are they going to up their price? Probably. Supply and demand. So you don't have that that control, right? Mm-hmm. But if you own the factory... You have control. You have control up to a point where you you know you're still having to order the stuff to make the product. And again, I haven't even looked to see if this person has a website to buy directly or or whatnot. But I did do a quick Google search before we got on here just to see where I could have gone and got this, and it showed up at Ulta. Okay. So he. So that so I mean, that they're big time. Through Ulta. Yeah. So they're big time if they're in Ulta. Yeah. Right? For sure. So. Yeah. So, but what what would happen if Ulta went out of business? If that person had a website, then you could be able to go on their website and buy it. They would lose a, a they'd lot of revenue. Lo yeah, they'd lose a big portion of yeah, revenue because they Ulta is a big name. So that's a... A big name picking them up. So that's a principle in business. You never depend on... One one customer right yep we learned that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know um I agree. if you always depend on one customer you're you're basically limited to whatever that customer wants or right. that place attracting certain people mm -hmm. you're limiting yourself on that too right so like I would, if this was only sold at Dick's Sporting Goods, it's not. But let's mm -hmm. say it, I, I don't. I think I've been in Dick's Sporting Goods a total of two times in my life. I know, don't have an interest in going into Dick's Sporting Goods. Mm -hmm. Just saying, like I, there, I'm Where's not there. Carter at County now. What you talking about? You got uh, your camo girl? Oh my about? god, I'm not their target audience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not their target audience. Girl, you got to blend in. But that's what I'm saying. I would have never found that. I would have never found this. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's just. If it was in the wrong place. Yeah, if it was in the wrong place. I got you. So.